Peace and blessings, salutation, bros. This is I Am Young Black Man. Come back at y'all with another video. Hope everybody's having a safe week or beginning of the weekend of the week whenever you see this video. Hope everybody's being prosperous and successful. Uh, today, I want to do a quick, just a real quick video. This might take five, ten minutes tops. Uh, I'm talking about don't ever let anybody stifle your genuine happiness, your genuine success, your genuine manhood. What I mean by this is don't let anybody critique it or not even so much critique it because people are going to give their criticism no matter if you're the best person in the world and and you, you save a million people or, or you, you end world hunger, people are going to still find a way to criticize you. Not saying it from that perspective at all. We take constructive criticism all the time, especially when it comes from a good place. But what I mean is don't let anybody let stifle the simple things in life. Uh, I don't mean it from the perspective of you dating three people, three uh, women at a time and they don't know about each other. That's how you get yourself killed. That's how you get yourself in a world of trouble. And somebody generally is telling you, hey, you know, you might think that you're having fun or doing. I just watched Devon Franklin. If you don't know him, go definitely Google him. And that's what I got that story from. But not nothing like that from that perspective. I mean, from a general perspective of you doing something that's not bothering anybody, that's not harming anybody. You're doing it for your personal happiness, your personal success, your personal growth your personal manhood journey. Don't never let anybody stop you from doing that or or tell you uh, that you're wrong. Again, I'm getting to the story of why I say that. I need some context. It was me and a female, uh, me and a sister hanging out, um, just having lunch. And all of a sudden, she, I was, I saw a Mustang pass by. I said, ooh. I said, look at it. I want one. And uh, then I seen another truck pass by. I was like, oh, wait. Then I might want that instead. And all of a sudden, she stopped and she was like, nah, why you want one of those? I see every single guy say, and she was basically saying like her and her girlfriends, meaning her and her, her other female friends, every time they see a guy like that, they say, well, this guy has, uh, it must be short or he must have Napoleon complex. Or not to get too graphic, they were like, well, he must have uh, small extremities in other parts without getting too graphic. And uh, and I was like, whoa, that kind of threw me off from her saying that. And I know she a little bit on the... Uh, uh, other side of the spectrum, one of those uh, devout, uh, you know, uh, scholars who, again, I believe in misguided manhood. I, I question the, the the theory of of the specific targeted group when it comes to toxic masculinity. So I'm not a huge fan of that particular term. I do believe in misguided manhood, but simply having a truck or having a, a a fast car, I don't understand how that equates to either toxic masculinity or them feeling that somebody has Napoleon complex. I might be telling my age, but you know, I grew up uh, playing with Hot Wheels and, and playing with, so we, so a lot of brothers who are my age and, and older, maybe not some of the younger brothers, but some of the older brothers like myself, uh, grew up, you know, playing with sports cars and, and having the, the vehicles that you could go to, you know, a grocery store, a gas station for seven, uh, five, seven bucks, get you a, 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 a legitimate metal Mustang or, or Corvette or whatever. And you had, you know, maybe 10 of them inside of your, your toy box or, or whatever you had growing up inside of a drawer where you kept all your toys at. So generally, we grew up in that era of liking those cars. So automatically, when we got older, guess what happened? We started liking them. I saw a video a couple of weeks back or maybe a couple of months back about these older uh, uh, Italian-American men, I believe it was, and how everybody was saying back up in the day, and particularly like areas like New Jersey, the Corvette was the car. So when they got older, of course, they went out there and when they... Financially able to buy it, but well, bought all Corvettes when they gra uh, not when they graduated, but when they retired. Because again, that was innately in us. That what brings happiness. It's not hurt, hurting anybody, you're not harming anybody. You just simply living out a childhood dream, a childhood fantasy. Maybe for us, it might have wanted to play major league sports. Maybe we could never do that. So we grow up watching sports. We go to sports games. We do it things that bring us joy, that bring us happiness. Connect back to our childhood in a little bit, and kind of just have that honest and genuine happiness. So and then those three sets, she not only attacked, you know, not only my personal style and preference in life, but attacked my ha attack, not even attacked, but just so much as critiqued happiness, masculine identity, and then something that generally brings you uh, success. Because to own a vehicle like that, you must mean, hey, in some way you are successful, you must be able to afford that vehicle. You've made some right moves somewhere. You've been decent enough somewhere. You've been manable or general, uh, 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 generally enough somewhere. You've been correct in your perspective somewhere to be able to now physically or financially be able to support uh, a dream to own this vehicle, at least this vehicle, I have this vehicle. And to me, that was just very problematic. But again, it go back to even the double standard. Again, this is not a red pit channel, but I'll give you a double standard. A little bit later, it's a, a, a sister who owns 
a, a, a pink uh, Camaro or a Mustang or something. Like, oh, yes, sis. She was like, congratulating girl collects you. I, I like the new car or whatever. And I was like, whoa, what's the issue with her? What, why are you congratulating her, but you critiquing me and this other brother for having this vehicle, saying what kind of man has a vehicle like that? He must be have no confidence. He must be low self-esteem and all this kind of stuff, or, or saying that he lacks in other areas of his life, so he has to compensate by owning this vehicle or dressing this way or, or you know, putting on suits every day, or he must not feel, you know, uh, I can't remember what term to use, he must not feel comfortable with himself. He got to come in and wear a suit every single day. That's even critiques I hear from me because I like to dress up on a job or when I'm going out and about. Or even, uh, I don't know if you follow uh, the hashtag Suit Saturdays, but there's a lot of black brothers now, black men getting up on Saturdays wearing suits, just running general errands because it's, it's a trend, it's a movement, it's a, it's a set thing, it brings happiness, it brings joy. You know, uh, it brings a certain level of respect. So again, you hear all these things that are not harming anybody, not doing anything, just bros just saying, hey, I finally reached a certain point in my life. And not even, and certain bros, even in high school or college, are falling to suit Saturdays. It's like, hey, I'm doing something that I always want to do. This brings me happiness. This brings me genuine success. I've had a long week. So yeah, I want to put on a shirt and tie, hop in a nice car, hop in a nice truck, and go somewhere. And again, I just thought about that. Don't ever let anybody critique or criticize what genuinely, genuinely brings you happiness. If you say at 25, hey, you know, I'm tired of doing this. I want to own my own home. Don't let anybody criticize you for that. That's nothing bad. You're doing, you're doing yourself good. Um, if you say, hey, you know what? I want to go back to college. I want to go back to school. I want to go back and get a trade. Don't ever everybody anybody critique that. Why is he doing that? Why do you want to do so? If that brings you genuine happiness, that's the goal that you came to obtain. If you say, hey, I worked hard this entire last 10 years. I have X, Y, Z in my savings account. I'm going to take 5% of my savings, uh, not even 5% of your savings account, but a certain percentage of my savings and go book a trip to New York or Hawaii. Or I'm going to go out here and go and go, you know, for the first time in my life, I'm actually comfortable enough. Instead of me spending this twenty five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 on a car that I, I won't like, I'm going to go up here and go buy this truck because I know a truck you can put 300,000 miles on. I tell any brother, don't look at it from a negative perspective. If you know how to handle a truck and, and, and repair a truck, I've seen some trucks with 350 some thousand miles on them, legitimately. So again, it goes back to that perspective of just like, whoa, you're criticizing my genuine happiness, my personal opinion, and you're saying, hey, automatically you put me in this negative box saying, if he drives his vehicle, that must mean he got zero confidence or Napoleon complex or certain issues that he has to overcompensate by owning this big truck now again i'm not crazy about the f-350s 250s whatever i like the f-150 i like the uh the silverado i like the Colorado. i like the 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 um toyota tundra i like the toyota tacoma again some people like the diesel truck whatever you like if that's what you enjoy that's what you enjoy to me i like more of the mid-size to just the you know i like the gmc sierras again but this is just what we grew up looking at what we grew up watching and not so much are we trying to emulate this ideal of masculine. This is what brings us happiness. For some people, that might be a Subaru who bring, what brings them happiness. For some people, they may say, I see my dad all entire life driving nothing but um, GM. So I'm going to go own a GM. I don't care what kind of car it is. Some people may say I like Toyota. Some people like the gas and fuel fish. Legitimately, I know brothers at professional job. You know, have a beautiful girlfriend or a beautiful wife, legitimately drives a Corolla. There's nothing wrong with that. Whatever brings you happiness, is, that's what brings you happiness. They like the physical ideal of having, you know, less gas, but still looking good. I, those to, I, was a, The Toyota Avalon look phenomenal. Some of the best cars I've seen. The new Hyundai, um, Hyundai Accords, I believe they are. Look phenomenal. They, I don't know who's uh, engineering and crap, not getting on a ramp, but engineering and crafting for Hyundai. Uh, not Hyundai, Honda, but some things look amazing. The new Hyundai um, SUVs look amazing. The Santa Fe's. But I say all this to say this. Whatever makes you happy, do that. Don't never let anybody critique you or, or criticize you or make you feel less than or smaller than because something generally brings you happiness. If you're working hard five, seven days a week, like Mr. Samuel said, you know, a lot of brothers should be working 60 plus hours. If you're working 60 plus hours and you finally are in the, in the, in the place where you want to reward yourself with buying your first home or or leasing or 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 renting um you know uh uh uh, uh, uh i don't know a villa or a townhouse for a weekend to go to florida if, you know if you decide you want to go finally buy yourself a truck or, 
or you want that Mustang finally. You ain't got to be retirement. If you see you can get it early, you say, hey, this is what I want. This is what's going to bring me happiness. I don't do a lot for myself. This is a one time. And you don't have other responsibilities. Like, say, you know, you got family and college fun to worry about. You just out here just living your life. You know, Dr. Boyce Watkins would probably, you know, tell you the strands or criticize that, which, you know, of course, he's a financial. He's one of the greatest financial gurus that we have hands down on, on planet Earth. So, again, you know, you have to listen to what makes the most sense for you in your life and also listen to other OGs and kind of get wisdom and advice from them. But you say, hey, this is what's going to bring me happiness, that I work hard enough. This is what I want. This is finally what I'm able to obtain. This is what I want to have. And I'm going to now use this truck to not only, you know, uh, do X, Y, and Z. I'm going to start a moving company. So I got this truck on the weekends. It's going to help me make money. Double back. You see what I'm saying? Well, I got this. I got instead of buying this two door Mustang, I'm going to buy this four door truck. So that when it's time to take, you know, my grandparents to the hospital or to the doctor's appointments or whatever, or it might be to go out to eat, they can all hop in my truck, whatever. People don't understand that you do other things for other reasons. And people are so ready to criticize and critique and dog your genuine happiness. Do what makes you happy in life. As long as it's not hurting anybody, as long as you're doing it on a righteous path, that it agrees with the plan and the, and the message that the most high has set for us. We mean, come on now, let's not play dumb. We we know at the end of the day, we still have to align our life with the values of the most high. Sin is 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 transgression of the law. So if you're not transgressing against the law, but you're actually doing, you're living your life the right way, and you simply say, hey, I want to do something to finally, you know, treat myself. I've been on this diet for, for six weeks. I want to go have a nice bowl of ice cream, and I just go work it out tomorrow. I work it off tomorrow. Shout out to Dr. Eric Thomas, the ET hip hop preacher who use that analogy all the time. You have to do whatever makes you happy in life and find that peace and serenity and happiness within yourself. So didn't mean to make that video too long. It was going to be five minutes like we're going on 12. So just make sure that whatever your genuine happiness is and you is aligned with the most high and, the, and, and, it's, a, and it's the righteous thing and the right thing, don't ever let anybody say that you can't do it or, or dog you and dish you for it. The simple reason that you're living your life and being happy, being peaceful, being loving, being caring, being kind, being the man that the most high has called you to be. Ultimately, follow your dreams, follow your responsibility, and do great things in life. Peace and men, blessing each and one of y'all. I'm on to the next one.